they're always on the rope and they find a way to keep themselves up. So I wholeheartedly believe that they're gonna um they they a league that they that you know they can dip down and grab a couple of these two things and start their transition, um, which we talked about in our swag swag extension video, uh, then I think that will help. I mean it's gonna, you know, at least prolong the life of the league um uh, for a while. But, you know, there's no timetable on on anything. You know, if anybody else gets an opportunity, they're probably gonna vote because the league is really starting to lose its luster. And losing uh so many teams in a short period of time is not a good look no matter who you are. So I you know, I hope and pray as an HBCU fan and a flag fan that the MEAC finds a way to survive. But if it's just a shambles of itself, then I think they're gonna have to try to rebrand one way or other and you know, go heavy D two um in that fashion or I, I you know, or or just risk losing uh the the major teams who are left. So that pretty much leads me to the main reason why I actually did this did this show. Um I wasn't gonna do this show about this topic. I had another topic that I wanted to talk about, but you know, I, I saw something that kinda tweaked my mind and I wanted to talk about it with you guys. So um scrolling scrolling through the the, the, the Blue Bird uh app, I um came across a tweet that really, really kinda got my attention, you know, and I I'm I you know, I don't really, you know, pay too much attention to what people say on Twitter or whatever, but this tweet really resonated with me and, you know, I didn't really get involved in the in the um in the thread because, you know, people were serving this guy pretty good, so I didn't feel like piling on. But I'm gonna put the tweet on the screen and you guys can read it. I'm gonna go through it and I'm gonna rebut it and then I'm you know and I'm gonna leave it alone. But this 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 tweet is from a guy who I know from, well I don't know him personally but I, I remember seeing him around on any given Saturday. I mean he was fairly knowledgeable um poster, you know, and I mean he's a uh Patriot League guy, so you know He's not a, you know, he's not a slave guy. And I, this is not going to be one of those, you know, you're not in the culture, man. Those, you can't comment because I don't feel like that. So anybody got the right to talk about what, you know, whatever they want. My thing is you need to always be somewhat knowledgeable on what you say, uh, open to, uh, open to correction. So, uh, let me, let me pop this up on the screen. You guys can kind of read it. Um, I'm just going to take it step by step. So, the, the first thing that really caught my eye is the the first point that he made, and that would that is if the uh, Howard left the MEAC, well, when Howard leaves the MEAC, there won't be any HCC conferences in the next five years. Now there are two FCS there's two FCS HCC conferences. Um, if the MEAC is on the verge of going away, I don't see how the SWAC would die from this. Now he tried to go uh a little bit further in a couple other posts and, and say, you know, that the Celebration Bowl and the ACC National Championship are, are, are so impactful to the SWAC and ACC football as a whole that that this is just going to make the SWAC crumble in, in five years. So, number one, I'm going to I'm going to take this point by point uh, because that's just that's what I do. Um, so he says if the celebration, if the, if the, um, if the MIA crumbles, then the swag is dead because no celebration bowl. Well, let's go back to, uh, let's go back to 1980, you know, 80s, early 90s. Uh, the swag did not have a, a, a postseason, uh, bowl game. Now they did go to the playoffs. Um, all teams who were eligible went to the playoffs. And, you know, anybody who else who, who didn't, they didn't go and they sent the next team. So, then, you know, if you look after that, they had the Heritage Bowl. Then when the Heritage Bowl died, there was a period of time from 1999 to 2016 where there was no postseason bowl game for the SWAC. The league just had their game, their season in on, um, on the SWAC championship game and, you know, hope and pray, which it never happened, that there would be a third team who would be eligible for the championship game. Now, if the league can survive, from ninety nine to twenty fifteen without uh, without a postseason bowl game, then this league is gonna survive from now till the league decides that it doesn't want to survive no more without the celebration bowl. 
because me and Sweat do not play even that often in the, in the regular season. So there's no super linking between these leagues that they are just so, you know, dependent on each other. Uh, Fam, you and Bethune Cookman are two of the teams who people played a lot in the from the, from the MEAC. They're now in the sweat. So the next team that most people play in the conference, in that conference is South Carolina State. So if they were to move to another league, whoever wants to play South Carolina State can still play them in the non-conference like they're doing already. Now the MEAC sweat challenge would go away, but that's you know that's not a big big loss. Um, so I don't see how just losing Howard and the MEAC dying would impact the sweat really at all. Um, now you can say I'm, you know, I'm foolish or I'm arrogant or whatever. I don't, you know, it's all good. I, I just don't agree with that. Um, let's look at a couple scenarios if if the MEAC was to die. So if the Sweat was left without a, 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 a conference opponent in the Celebration Bowl, they would either a not have a postseason bowl game and you know hope that you can get a Sam, you or somebody into the post, into the playoffs, like they did this year, which I don't see how that hurts the league. Um, two, you eliminate the Sprite Championship game, and you send your best team to the playoffs, unless it's Southern Grammar and Alabama State. Um, then, you know, you send the second best team, if, if possible. Um, so, again, I don't see how that's, that would cause the league to crumble. Um, I, I don't see any rule that says that a team that does not go to the playoffs cannot play in a bowl game. So if, if they were to continue the celebration bowl with a team who was qualified from, you know, these ACCU teams um, in another league, then I, I believe that the bowl game could continue as, as it is, you know. I mean, you can't really say that this game would just die and nothing would happen. Um, and then the other the other avenue I have, and this is you know one of those outside the box things that a lot of people don't really like, is um, inviting another conference. You know, I mean that was rumored that the uh, that the that the SWAC and the Ivy League would would come together for a bowl game. Now, I'm not a big fan of that, only because I don't really think there's a, a familiarity between the fan bases, and that's not you know the other. I don't think nobody's really gonna come out. Uh, maybe outside of the first year or so, uh, maybe the eyes on TV would be okay. But I'm, you know, I'm not really that big on that. I couldn't talk into it with the right, you know, with the right situation. So that's four things basically that I see that will keep the league from coming. This league has not lost a member since the uh, Pine Bluff left, and then they came back. So. The track has added four teams since 1997. It hasn't lost none since, like, the late 60s, early 70s. So this league is stable. Now, if the track was to start to lose members, then that's a different story. But this 12-team conference that they have right now with the growth that this league is going through and everything is, is happening, that is not dependent at all on the Celebration Bowl. This league is not growing because of the Celebration Bowl. This league is not growing because of the ACC National Championship which holds hardly any weight in terms of the structure of this league. That's probably the most ridiculous thing that I've ever heard in my life. And I've heard a lot of dumbass shit. But that, to me, it makes no sense. That's, that's somebody who sees something and doesn't, didn't really ask about it. Now, you know, that's how you feel, that's how you feel. But I don't see how the ATC National Championship that champion to be named even with no celebration bowl. They're going to vote for whoever they want, so that's not going to impact this at all. And if you saw how the 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 photo book was uh, with the fam you South Carolina State, Jackson State thing, the celebration bowl didn't even really come into, into a factor in this game because he wanted fam to win the national championship because they, you know, they were the highest ranked team or whatever. People want to get you to win because they had the best record. Some people want to start coming on the state to win because they want a celebration bowl. But that's, you know, that's my point. This game going away doesn't change any of that. It may make the swag, you know, kind of insulate more. Although I'm not a big fan of, just, you know, going back to that, the way that the league was before with just a post uh, championship game and then that's it. Um, I think a lot of the members in this league right now would not stand for that. So I think they would try to find another way to get postseason football. And if that's the case, then how the hell is this league going to disband in five years if they have an opportunity to send teams to the playoffs, which a lot of people want the swag to do. So I don't see how 
that can change anything. I don't see how that can affect anything. This is a person talking out their ass, knowing, you know, I mean, like I said, this guy's fairly knowledgeable, so I, I'm just, you know, but I just think that's a dumbass response and a dumbass tweet. Um, so that's pretty much where I stand on the first point because it makes no sense and it's shot down from the start. Uh, anybody with any knowledge of the swag understands that this league is just tough. Expand anymore, and they try to kind of, you know, go out of their way and, and, and maybe go too big, too fast. You know, a lot of people are in FBS. I'm not, everybody's not, not ready for that. Uh, most people aren't ready for that yet. That's a bridge we're talking to get to it. And that's another reason why this league won't die because I think, you know, it works for the worst. People are going to, you know, do what they got to do and try to move this league up. So that's number one. The league ain't going nowhere. I don't even see how it can go anywhere. I mean, you see an avenue of the strike disappearing because the MEAC dies, man, let me know, please. Let me know. Um, then the second point, and this is this was the one that I really stepped back and I thought about it. It says, uh, more than half the current D1 programs would drop to D2 during that same time frame. Now, we're talking about a five-year span. That's 2027, um, 2028, if you want to go from the point with how it leaves the MEAC. So by 2028, he's saying at least half of the teams in HBCU football that are FCS teams will be D2. Now, let's do some mathematics. There's 12 strike teams. Right now, there's uh, six. Um, right now, there's uh, six MEAC teams right now. There's, uh, then there's North Carolina, North Carolina NC, Howard, I mean, excuse me, North Carolina NC, Hampton. Tennessee State counting them as an HBCU team because they are. Um, and then you got uh, Maryland, Eastern Shore, and Chicago State that play basketball. And let's go ahead and throw Chicago State in there too because they Division One and they play basketball. So that's 12, that's 12 teams outside the swag, 12 teams in the swag. My mouth ain't that good. I'm not a mouth major, but I think that's 24. Now, half of that 24 is 12. But I think that's. Big moves. 
Now, you know, there's some things going on, you know, with, with some other stuff uh, behind the scenes right now that, that's going to, you know, have to get worked out, but that ain't affecting the growth of this league. Um, if you look at the way Jackson State is going alone, this league is not going nowhere, man. This league is getting more and more eyes on it. The Swag has a goddamn screen game on ESPNU on Sunday. What league doing that is going anywhere in five years, man? Please let me know, man, because this is just, oh, my God. So I, I'm, I'm about to hop on up out here, man. I just want to come through and, 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 and share that because, like I said, I read that. And I was like, I, you know, I, I, I just can't really, you know, do my response to this justice online. So I just wanted to make a video about it. Um, you know, if, if dude hears about this, and hit me up, man. We can stop it up for real. Um, and, and I, I, you know, I, I want to know more about the thought process because I just don't see it now. If you can see something like that, man, let me know, please, in the comments. Um, and that's gonna do it for me, man. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this bus. I got my Stephen A. Smith on today. Got a little loud, but, you know, I'm passionate about the swag. So um, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to hop on off out of here, man. Catch y'all tomorrow on Swag Smoke. And y'all have a good day, man.